Chapter 5. Positive BS. Negative energy. Energy is a measurement of work capabilities, performed, or potential, and it cannot be measured. Between the positive energy particles in the universe, the positive energy balances the negative energy stored in the gravitational attraction making it zero. Spiritual energies are an esoteric type of phenomenon in which a lot of people are interested, and there is no scientific evidence of it. The entity of justice is universality, and the entities of animals and humans require special treatment. But, entities aka entitlements won't ever exclude you from contamination. Because the bacteria in animal or human body cellate organisms form infectious diseases, etc., which forms disorders and other health problems. It is unknown how energies of vibrations or heaven influence our field of energy or why the connection to the etheric realms is so important to living our full potential. However, it is possible to learn how modifying our energy levels can help ourselves and others to live a productive lifestyle, and when you're ready change will come. Negative and Positive People Compared to negative a positive person is naturally considered assertive, assured, confident in opinion, and emphatic. And compared to positive a negative person is naturally considered unassertive, unassured, unconfident in opinion, and less emphatic. A positive person is unresisting towards consenting and proposals, while a negative person is resistant towards consenting and proposals. In religion, most principles require resistance to outer limits and non-resistance to God's commands. A positive person can be perceived as someone who makes excessive choices, while a negative person can be perceived as someone who makes less excessive choices. From a righteous standpoint, both the positive and negative attitudes would get you in trouble. While being excessive the person would constantly go beyond the usual, necessary, or proper limits. Even though being less excessive the person would go the usual, necessary, or proper limits. You cannot make negative choices every time, you need accurate and true discernment to acknowledge the difference between significant choices. What is responsible may not be fair, genuine, or even righteous. And what is a responsible decision relational may not be spiritual. A person can insert 40 years worth of true discernment, then not insert anything in the last 30 years, which can be perceived as false discerning. For these reasons positive and negative personality traits ought to be examined by comparing false and true discernment that is inserted over time. How do spirits feed off negative energy? Human spirits who demonize or dehumanize, don't care whom they hurt. They are self-conscious in envy, when luring innocent victims, and enforcing demands. Putting themselves in the devil or enemy's reflections, marveling at the higher energy levels, the same way a fire becomes intense on an object when gas is added. And won't accept accurate and true discernment unless there is a payoff. The self-conscious mood means they are uneasy and unhappy because such things are fortunate for others. The marveling mood means they are happy and content taking pleasure in others' distress and either show signs of a person who lacks empathy. Dogmatism. It is tending to lay down principles as incontrovertibly true, without consideration of evidence or the opinions of others. The same way religious put forth opinions about the gospel, without knowing about the mythical themes or being concerned about them. The same way non-religious question the gospel, not knowing the truth or being concerned about their sins. In which, either often put themselves above a person or group of people based upon the nature of their beliefs or religious doctrine. Arrogantly asserting opinions while appearing dogmatic, often converting other supporters who influence negatively forming doubt. Either person can be considered an ungrateful person. Although, religious are compassionate toward others' time of need, and are well informed about educational ideas. They lack empathy when injustice occurs. And although, non-religious are uncompassionate towards others' time of need, and are less informed about educational ideas. They show empathy when injustice occurs. Either of which makes it rather difficult for God to fully understand who is criminally wrong in these situations. There aren't enough sorrowful people in the world, or it would be a much better place. Passive-aggressive behavior. The medical definition of passive-aggressive is a display of and marked by behavior characterized by the expression of negative feelings, resentment, and aggression in an unassertive way, as through procrastination, stubbornness, and unwillingness to communicate, a passive-aggressive personality. The outdated definition that was rejected by the American Psychiatric Association is characterized by a habitual pattern of non-active resistance to expected work requirements, opposition, sullenness, stubbornness, and negative attitudes in response to requirements for normal performance levels expected by others. This definition seems a little brutal because you cannot let others define you, you need your direction to match your actions. It depends on whether or not the others are of authority, and it is wise to respect what people of authority have to say. In this world, there are three types of people. There's the type who avoids confrontation at any cost and rather give their left kidney before handling a tough situation. There is also the type that thinks they are entitled to saying whatever they feel, but mindlessly confronts people in the worst way. Then, there is the type that has passive-aggressive tendencies, and this includes some smart people. They indirectly get a point across, using the right amount of effort to let the other person know they mean business. We all have come across different types and can put them into one of the categories above. Is spotting a passive-aggressive person that easy? 
Yes slash no. According to the Mayo Clinic, signs of passive-aggressive behavior are a pattern of indirect expression of negative feelings instead of openly addressed feelings. There's a disconnect between what a passive-aggressive person says and what he or she does. Example, a passive-aggressive person might appear to agree, perhaps even enthusiastically, with another person's request. However, rather than complying with the request, he or she might express anger or resentment by failing to follow through or missing deadlines. Pathological Levels 1. Brief or no cooperation, a person has been working a job for three months and Monday comes, and they decide to not show up and then lose the job. A person applies for employment and gets the job, but they change their mind and then give an excuse for not even showing up. 2. Lack of ownership of representation, a person has five kids and not all are by the same person. They don't pay bills on time and loses every job, but use alcohol and drugs for the pursuit of happiness. The person appears careless and sloppy in everything they do or say. 3. Lack of concern, empathy, and enthusiasm, certain events take place in the family structure, and this person feels no empathy about any dreadful circumstance. The person isn't concerned and talks down about certain family members, etc. Family members visit the home and the person lacks compassion and enthusiasm. 4. Revengeful, resentment towards a family member, friend, or co-worker which often leads to retaliation. 5. Lack of individuality or motivation, once a person's individuality is rejected, it makes them devalue life and its expectations. Eventually, they aren't motivated to do or say anything that will get them ahead and may avoid engaging in life altogether. This commonly happens in very authoritative households, the result can be destruction, sabotage, and violence upon self and others. Passive-aggressive behavior can manifest consciously and subconsciously active or imagined, as a dependency, directly resentful, procrastinator, inflexible obstinate, and continual unaccomplished objectives and tasks in which the person has accepted responsibility. All characteristic distinctions are formed as temporary camaraderie, friend, or love. Although passive-aggressive behavior can be a feature of various mental health conditions, it isn't considered a distinct mental illness. However, passive-aggressive behavior can interfere with relationships and cause difficulties on the job. If you're struggling with passive-aggressive behavior, or you think a loved one is, consider consulting a therapist. Passive-aggressive with narcissistic behavior. A narcissist that has traits of passive-aggressiveness, actions are marked by patterns of unjustifiable criticism formed with a passive attitude that is commonly observable among associates, family, or friends. With an ego-driven narcissist, the any place at any time circumstance can lead to psychological afflictions through forms of distortion or extortion with force and many twists. All of which can result in torture for oneself leading to fatality, and even tragedy. Self-gratification behavior. It is the act of pleasing or satisfying oneself, especially the gratifying of one's desires, impulses, or wants. The opposite of gratification is delay gratification, the act of resisting an impulse to take an available reward in the hope of obtaining a more valued reward in the future. The ability to delay gratification is the act of self-control or self-regulation. Children who can wait at four years old, are more socially and academically successful as high school students and earn higher scholastic aptitude, SAT, scores. Because it requires patience to learn educational stuff. As an adult it is five times harder to be academically and socially inclined with others, once you have delayed development, but changing self-gratification behavior can be crucial. Self-gratification psychology terms. 1. Confirmation, concerning purpose of behavior, the satisfaction of anticipation strengthens the behaviors that facilitated satisfaction. 2. Demand feeding, self-denial the act of suppressing a desire and foregoing satisfaction. 3. Fulfillment, the term for the actual or felt satisfaction of needs and desires and the attainment of aspirations, such as wish fulfillment. 4. Oral center, a pattern of personal traits determined by drives originating in the oral stage of psychosexual development, and it being the center focus. 5. Pleasure center, any of multiple different regions of the brain which, upon intracranial self-stimulation, have been involved in generating satisfaction. 6. Pleasure principle, it is the instinctive seeking of pleasure and avoiding of pain to satisfy biological and psychological needs. 7. Psychogenic need, being concerned with emotional satisfaction in opposition to biological satisfaction. Eight. Socialized drive, a drive that has been modified through social learning to achieve satisfaction. 9. Urethral eroticism, it is carnal satisfaction stemming from urination. 10. Vicarious enjoyment, the satisfaction one gets as an outcome of another's gains or other positive encounters, frequently due to an identification with this other person. Is masturbation a form of self-righteousness? Yes. It is self-gratification to desires and notions that often lead to bold, corny, and irrational behavior. What are blasphemous thoughts? Using profanity, swear terms that include God, earth, or heaven.